It is a quick brief presentation. The lecture is on the Charter Act 1793, its circumstances, main provisions and the significance. It is a part of the lecture series with a link to a complete, usable answer. The motive of the partial display and the content of the video are as follows. It partially displays the main video of the lecture titled, Charter Act 1793, Circumstances, Provisions, Significance. Only criticism and significance of the Charter Act of the Charter Act 1793 is streamed herein. It is presented under the impression that studying a long answer to any question in parts helps one grasp the answer. It helps in consolidating the answer. It helps in quick revision. It helps to rewrite the answer in one's own words and phrases. The link to the complete answer is given below in the video's description. Now let us talk about the purpose and plan of the lecture. The lecture is on the topic of the Charter Act 1793. It is based on the content of the book, The History of Constitution of India. The Charter Acts during the company rule in India 1773 to 1858, ISBN 13-978-19830468-34, with an OCLC number unique identifier, 10861699936. The link to the online purchase of its ebook and paperback copy is given in the video's description. The purpose is to provide a video study aid to the content of the book. The lecture begins now. As mentioned at the beginning of this session, we are going to explain the criticism and significance of the Charter Act of 1793. Point 1. It started a series of fresh charters after every 20 years. Three more Charter Acts followed, which continued the company's existence until it was abolished by the Good Government of India Act in 1858. It introduced Parliament's measure to establish control over the workings of the company under the direction and supervision of the state. Parliament passed the Charter Act of 1793 exclusively to give patents to the company. Point 2. Provisions of the 1784 Act reiterated. The Charter Act 1793 reiterated the principles and policies defined in Pitt's India Act 1784. The Act stipulated that the company would not follow the policy of territorial expansion. However, the Governors General benefited from the distance from London, the underdeveloped mode of communication, which was time-consuming, and the more protracted processes of decision-making on the part of the Board of Control and Court of Directors. Point 3. It strengthened the control of Parliament over the company. The Charter Act 1793 consolidated the provisions of the Regulating Act 1773 and the Pitts India Act 1784. It provided more details about the rules already established by earlier statutes. The powers of the Governor General were defined, and he was made more powerful. Point 4. The exploitation of Indian wealth increased. The Charter Act of 1793 increased the expenditure of the Indian government. The salaries of the Board of Control were derived from India's revenue. The economic condition of India was deteriorating in the territories which had come under the rule of the Governor General. Point 5. The post of Governor General in Council Consolidated. No significant changes were made in the Government of India. However, the Governor General's power was increased. He was empowered to make appointments to the post of Justice of Peace, given the power to levy taxes, and authorized to issue liquor licenses. Point 6. Parliament's dominance over revenue and territory of British India administration. The Act brought finance and accounts under the purview of Parliament. The Charter Act of 1793 was a consolidating measure. Before the Charter Act of 1813, it had brought under its sway a significant part of Indian territory. Now a suggestive exercise. Question. What were the main features of the Charter Act of 1793? The lecture ends. Your comments, suggestions, and remarks will help develop future lectures.